if you're like most people, you are constantly on the go. Chances are you probably think it takes too much time and effort to manage your time. But as our next guest will tell you, the benefits of time management far outweigh the work. Lisa Tesla is the owner of Precision Leadership Group. She's going to help us all get on the right track towards better time management. How about that, Lita? You're going to help us get better time managing. Sounds good. So, <laughs> so let's start with this. I mean, it's like we look at it and like, who doesn't say, gee, I don't have enough time in my day. How many times do you hear that? Quite often. And, you know, just think of yourself, Gary. How many times have you woke up in the morning, your feet hit the floor, you're going 150 miles an hour all day long, you get in bed at night, your head hits the pillow, and you sit there and you think, what did I even accomplish today? Has Probably that, a lot of times. Yeah. Everybody thinks that a lot, right? Exactly. And so it's all about time management is really a misnomer. We can't manage time, but what we can manage and what we have 100% control over is what we do with our time. So let's talk about that. I mean, to, there's, there's got to be, how do we sit down and say, okay, first identify that, you know what, my life is chaotic. I need to do something because something's missing. Mm -hmm. What's the first things we need to do? Well, and first of all, before I give you the first step, I just want to mention the fact that being busy is really an addiction. Number one, it makes us feel needed. It makes us feel like we are important if we feel like we always have something that we have to be doing. And number two, it's a great avoidance tool from doing the things that we know we really should be doing, like making those sales calls or you know whatever it is in our day to day that we don't necessarily love to do. So the first thing I always do with people when I work with them is I have them really evaluate the, we, we look at seven different areas in your life and I have them evaluate where they are in each area of their life. And once they figure out where they are and where they would like to be and identify those gaps, then they can start setting goals. Because until you have some goals or objectives, things that you want to accomplish, it's hard to determine what are the things I should be focusing on. And this doesn't happen with just business no. people. This is, I mean, this is everyday life, whether you're a, you're a, you're a stay-at-home mom or dad. Absolutely. If you're retired, wh whatever the case might be, we all have these issues. So Absolutely. let's talk about finding, you know, there, there's seven areas in life that we need to address first. Is that right? Is, yes. So let's talk about those. Yes. So once you once you identify you know the here's the seven areas physical intellectual family social career financial and spiritual and once you identify where you feel you are in each of those areas and where you would like to be then you can start setting some goals and once you set goals or objectives that you want to achieve that's when you start figuring out what are the activities i really need to be focusing on to achieve these things that i want to do in my life and it's not until we identify what we call our high payoff activities, the things that are going to move us forward, that we can actually start accomplishing more. So let's talk about goal setting. And so mm -hmm. what's the, is, is it a goal that I want to accomplish today? Is it something by the end of the week? Is it something five years from now? How All do we get there? All of those. So planning is so important. It's a huge part of becoming more productive. And Planning your day, they always, we always say plan your day on paper before you start it because what happens is we go to answer the phone or we go to check our email and the next thing we know it's noon and we haven't even started on any of the things that we really wanted to get accomplished for the day. So planning is very important. Once you identify the things you want to accomplish, then we do daily planning, weekly planning, monthly planning, and, and yearly planning. You have to know where you're going. And so what about those that can't say no? They are uh, pleasers, people pleasers. They want to make sure that mm -hmm. every, everything feels good all the time. I'm able to help people. I want to help people, but yet yeah. we can't say no. One of the best ways to get better at saying no is to do these things, to set your own goals, to sit down and make a plan for what you want to do for the day. It's really hard to say no when you look at, your, when you look at what you have planned for the day and there's nothing there. The first thing you think of is, well, how can I say no? I don't have an excuse. I don't have anything else that I have to be doing. But if, you are, if you're diligent and intentional about what you're going to do for the day and you have it all planned out, it's a lot easier to say no or not right now. I can't do it today, but maybe next week. How about multitaskers? Uh, oh. <laughs> multitaskers, yes. And us moms are the worst at that. You can't multitask. It just When you multitask, you do neither thing well. And science has proven this. We cannot do, our brains do not function in the way that we can do two cognitive things at once. Perfect example of this is, you know, you can walk and chew gum because you have one thing is cognitive and the other is not. But, for instance, when you're driving, 
it, we, we do that pretty automatically now because we've done it for so long. And you can drive and carry on a conversation and listen to a book on tape or whatever, but the second you get lost, what do you do? Everybody be quiet, turn the radio down, yeah. I got to find this place. Because we can't do two cognitive things at once. So when you are multitasking, you aren't doing either thing well. You are so much better off focusing on one thing at a time and finishing it before you go on to the next thing. So how do we help people get to that first step of saying, okay, what's, what's, it, how many goals should we set if we're going to actually try to make a change? Great question, great question. So big goals set three to five. Don't overwhelm yourself. Three to five things maybe that you want to accomplish for a year, over the year. And then each week and break that down to what you need to do in the week and during the day. Set three, five minimum, minimal goals, little goals along the way. And, and we hear a lot, a buzzword is, or not a buzzword, but it's just like we all want to accomplish that work-life balance mm. if we're still working. Mm -hmm. But can we really achieve that? How does that how does that play into this? You know, work-life balance is a great thing to strive for, but the fact is we are never going to be 100% balanced on a daily basis. What you really want to try to achieve is over a week or a month period have some balance in that amount of time. So maybe this week you're focused on your family and next week you focus on a project that you're doing, but you're never going to have that balance on a daily basis. So don't kill yourself trying to achieve that. There it is. We solved it all. We yeah. solved the world's problems today. There you so. go. Lisa, good stuff. Thanks for coming in today, helping us with it.